Hi, I'm Danielle Maidis here at Caring Medical Florida, and I have a great presentation for you today on wrist instability with an emphasis on TFCC injuries. So TFCC stands for Triangular Fibrocartilage Complex. It's a lot easier to say TFCC, so that's what I'm gonna call it. And that is a structure that's right here on what we call the ulnar side of your wrist. Your wrist is honestly just a sea of a bunch of little bones. All right, just to kind of keep it easy. So all of them are listed right here. So just for orientation, this is as if I have my hand like this, right? So these are the two bones in your forearm, your wrist, and then we get up into your fingers here. The TFCC specifically is located over here again on this ulnar pinky side of your wrist. What holds all these bones together is essentially a sea of ligaments. You have a whole network of them that holds your wrist bones in place and keeps it stable while still allowing you to move it. When these ligaments get injured, okay, like somebody falls on their wrist, you sprain your wrist, you know, injure it in however, you know, variety of different ways, what can happen is these ligaments can get stretched out. So I often compare this to a rubber band, you know, like I think of a tight rubber band and you stretch it out to the point where it kind of stays loose and floppy, that can happen to our soft tissue. So these main stabilizing structures, these ligaments, when they're not tight enough to hold those bones together and they get stretched out, they allow for excess movement just by definition, okay? When you have too much excess movement, that is what is called wrist instability or joint instability. So people that have joint instability often um, complain of or remark about popping, clicking, snapping. They could lose some of their motion. They could have a lot of swelling. Obviously they could have a lot of pain. All the muscles maybe in your forearm, they'll get referred pain into those muscles or those muscles will feel really tight because they're working overtime trying to provide some stability that they can. You might also feel like you, you don't have strength, like your wrist, because it's unstable, you're not getting proper muscle activation, you can't hold things, maybe a cup of coffee, the way that you could before, or the way that you can in your other hand. Continuing with that, when people have chronic joint instability in their wrist, over time, you can get tendinitis, tendinosis, tendon degeneration, all of this from, again, those tendons working overtime, trying to provide stability to the area. You can get nodules, right, from excess motion in the body starting to overgrow bone, trying to stabilize that area. Those are kind of like little bone spurs, little osteophytes. Carpal tunnel syndrome, which I'm gonna do a video on that as well. If you've got excess motion in your wrist, really all of our nerves in our body for the most part lay really in, in close proximity to your bone. So if your bone is moving more than it should, it can easily kind of tap on or repeatedly hit a nerve, ticking that off and causing injury. Uh, and then of course, a triangular fibrocartilage complex tear, TFCC tear. If you have excess motion in your wrist, it's gonna put a lot of strain on that structure, that kind of cartilaginous structure on that wrist and can cause that to tear or break down. The TFCC, kind of like what I just mentioned, it does have cartilage, like an articular disc, a meniscus in that area, and then some ligaments and a tendon that help create a lot of stability to that ulnar side of your wrist. When people have injuries specifically related to the TFCC, of course you're gonna get, get a lot of pain in that area as you would imagine. You can get a lot of swelling too. You can um, actually have more limited range of motion or especially like if you try to wave like this kind of motion, it might hurt like heck. And whenever you're trying, like if you think about flipping something like this kind of supination, pronation mo movement, that can really, really hurt as well. So like you're trying to like dump something out, um, pour you know, yourself a cup of coffee as an, uh, an example can be really, really painful and limiting. Chronic injuries oftentimes don't heal well on their own and you can actually get compensation and more injuries in other areas that are trying to take on the load from the structure that's injured. So over time, they're associated with instability or injuries to other structures, even the DRUJ, it's called the distal radial ulnar joint at kind of the top of your wrist. There is a surgery for TFCC tears which does have good results overall. There is also evidence providing that prolotherapy with or without PRP or platelet-rich plasma as a non-surgical treatment option for TFCC tears and wrist instability that does work well as well. Here's an example of an ultrasound in that area. Okay, so these are right here, these are all bones that are labeled. This is the ECU, okay, that's your tendon that surrounds this TFCC or kind of lays on top of that TFCC area, I should say. And then here just kind of color-coded that disc, that meniscus area, and that makes up that TFCC. 
One thing that ultrasound can do that's really interesting that you can't do on MRI or CT is you can stress the joint, right? So like if I have an ultrasound probe on someone's wrist and I move it in certain positions, I can actually see like if this area, if it gaps more than it should, if these bones are moving more than they should, how is that tendon moving in that sheath? And you can actually get a lot of really good information about stability in that area. So let's say somebody has a TFCC tear. Maybe we already knew that because they had an MRI before they got here. MRIs are not gonna tell me if that joint is stable or unstable. So by stressing the joint and doing motion imaging with ultrasound, we can actually see how much joint instability is actually contributing to that patient's symptoms. Because even, you know, I use this analogy a lot in the office, like if I could wave a magic wand over your TFCC and it's perfectly healthy and it's healed and so forth, but you still have your joint instability, that can actually cause things to come back, you know? And we don't want that, right? We wanna think long-term, like how can we help this patient's wrist so that they're really good long-term and resolving the joint instability is often a key component of that. This is a summary based on 31 patients with wrist pain. This is when Dr. Hauser ran a charity clinic um, in Illinois years ago. These patients only received dextrose prolotherapy no PRP or platelet-rich plasma. And in 31 patients, 14 patients were told there was no other treatment option for their wrist pain. Five were told that surgery was their only option. After their prolotherapy treatment series, 90% of all patients overall responded with greater than 50% pain relief, okay? In the group that was told that there was no other treatment option, 78% of those patients had greater than 50% pain relief. In the group that was told surgery was their only option, all five of them had greater than 50% pain relief. And what's amazing about this is, again, this was just dextrose prolotherapy, no formal rehab, just treatment every three months, and, and that was it, and they did exceptionally well with that. I'm gonna end with a video that actually is showing um, prolotherapy to the wrist, so you're actually gonna be able to see the injections on the patient and then actually be able to see where they are correlated to the x-ray. So again, the wrist is a sea of ligaments, like I said, right? So there's a lot of little attachments that we have to get in order to kind of rebuild the wrist, restabilize the wrist as a whole. And that's what makes comprehensive prolotherapy, you know, not just one or two shots here or there, but working, looking at the entire joint dynamic, the entire joint function, and working to get it to be stable and functional as a whole. And again, you can see that needle where it's going.